So welcome. Uh, in this episode, we will have a look at what free and open source software is and also look a bit at the history behind it. So you think that the free and open source is a new thing. But it's kind of old, and it's been around for many years. One of the first examples of, of the free software was the typesetting program Tech, still in use today, by the way. I mean, e was, e even before Tech, I guess the default was that software was open. So it's, it's... Absolutely. There was a, a spirit of sharing and, and, and sending files and patches and even some like uh, systems where you didn't have any password, uh, uh, etc. I think even that before that, it was mostly that uh, software was just a means to to use hardware. So you would buy the hardware, you would, you would pay for the hardware, and you just needed the software. So it was just a necessity, but it wasn't anything... Uh, which was meant to be sold or anything. It was just a means to use the hardware. And for that, uh, it was quite nice that you could just get the source code. So if there was some, some bug in it, you would just be able to fix it and so on. But it wasn't meant to be, to be this big thing, which, uh, which it is now. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the, I think with the programming language C, you could reuse software more easily between like printer versions or like computers. So all of a sudden there, there was, as, as you're implying, a, a need to capitalize or commercialize software. And, and in order to do that, you locked it in. And this guy here, Stallman, Richard Stallman, he started a, a counter movement, the free software movement to that wanted to create a free software and uh, a completely free operating system called GNU. And the, the thing wasn't only free as in free beer, but also free as in freedom to, to sort of give the users full rights. Yeah, and I, I think it's beautifully described that you're, you're, you're moving, shifting the, the control from the supplier or the developer to the user. And I, I suppose the free operating system that we're talking about is as opposed to the closed operating system, mainly Unix, right? Yeah. Heard for the win. Wasn't that the, the goal? <laughs> That's a great kernel. So I think we, we, we've mentioned free software, so let, let's define it. So the, it's defined by four freedoms. So, and, and they go from, so this is written by hacker, uh, they go from zero to three. So freedom zero is uh, the freedom to run the program for any purpose. So if, if I put some kind of restriction on my software saying you can't run it on Mondays if it's sun upside, then that, that's a kind of restriction. And I think even if you if you restrict it so you cannot use it to kill people, that would also be a restriction. Yeah, and that's interesting because there's been a lot of discussion over the last year uh, about the social, ethical skills uh, side of software. Let's yeah. save that for another day, but because this is a sensitive topic. Yeah, and I was <laughs> going to say that uh, for JSON, the original the JSON library, uh, there was a specific license which said that you were not allowed to, uh, to use it uh, for evil. And then actually the, the copyright holder uh, was contacted by the by people at IBM who wanted to use it for for evil, and they actually got a re got a uh, an exception. Oh, <laughs> interesting! <laughs> Which was made public, if I remember correctly. Yeah, exactly. It said something like IBM, its minions, and so on are allowed <laughs> to use it for evil. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to freedom one. So the freedom to study the program and. This is something that fascinated me in the late 90s, where I, of course, I found a bug in printf in the C library. So I, I downloaded the source code, et voila, I noticed that, oh, shit, it's me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm the bug. But I, <laughs> it was fascinating for me that I could look at how they have implemented the printf uh, 
function and I fell in love with the, the whole idea. Freedom three, uh, two, that's freedom to redistribute and make copies. So basically, if I get a piece of software from one friend, then I should be allowed to give it to another friend, copy it to another friend. This is also beautiful for me. And freedom. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the, uh, the way of redistribution uh, is not defined here, obviously, so you could redistribute it and get paid for the redistribution if you wanted to, like sell CDs and stuff like that. Absolutely. And it says actually nothing about money so far. So let's check the third freedom. It's a freedom to improve the program and release your improvements. So basically, if, if, I, if I find a bug in, say, in printf, and I could release a, a non-buggy version of printf. And by the way, I never found a bug. But, <laughs> uh, so it, but these four freedoms are like the definition of free software. But this is not restrictions, it is freedoms. So it's, I mean, we, we imply this, that you can still charge for things and for instance, and, and, and you're not forced to release your improvements to, to everyone. It, it just, we will see that with the license, that it, that it sort of follows the distribution of the software. Um, yeah. so it's... And also you, you can see in the license, the coming license section that there are different interpretations of this. Uh, on what is freedom according to me and freedom ac according to you. It's all about sharing code. And then let's go back to the years and we're into the 90s. There was something called Linux that entered the arena made by a Finnish guy called Linus Tsova. He wrote a kernel that complemented the GNU system that Richard Stallman set out to develop and they fit it perfectly. Uh, Linus used GPL v2, uh, a license which we're going to check into a bit later. And all of a sudden, we had a complete operating system. So, just to reiterate, the kernel which he did is the part of the software uh, on a computer which talks directly to the hardware. And the rest, the GNU part, which came from uh, Stallman and his uh, friends, was uh, like all the tools which you need to for daily work uh, in user space, uh, which which is not talking directly to the hardware. I think they had a different kernel before. This what was it called? Herd or something? Uh Heard. Was that also an open source kernel or was that a closed source one? I would say is, so that yeah. we don't defend anyone, but <laughs> I, I think was might be a, a good term for <laughs> from a practical perspective. Exactly. Um, I mean the the herd is is still a uh, uh, I mean it's it's a it's a system with a microkernel. So I think the kernel is actually actually called Mac. And then herd is Mac plus a bunch of uh, services that run on it, and it's it's still being developed, but uh, it's not that it's not really ready for production use, which and Linux was, and <laughs> is, so okay. Yeah, but I mean, th this how the user space programs so of the GNU stuff talks to the kernel, so so Linux or herd. I mean, that, that's where the roots go back to Unix, I would say, because then, then we're looking at the POSIX interfaces or something very similar to POSIX. Um, mm. and, and that's an interface that the kernel exposes to user space and which is shared among all operating systems that basically has Unix roots of, of some sort. Um, and that's also what makes software portable between them. Okay, and in the 90s, we also saw a reaction to the word free in free software. So there was a couple of guys that created the open source movement. It was a way to make it more like, well, take away the focus on freedom, which was scary for some people. But uh, I mean, it's, it's not really, considering what we saw about the four freedoms, uh, there is nothing really to object against in those. It was. I suppose more of a practical issue with the existing licenses that uh, that implemented those freedoms, right? 
but I think also in the marketing, they, they focus on on different things than the free software people. The free software people spoke about the um, values of sharing code and, and all that stuff. And that was perhaps tough when you're marketing a, a solution. Oh, I yeah. think uh, one difference was that the free software people focused on the user while the open source people focused on on the developer community uh, just as a focus not nothing specific but uh, the focus was different for, for both and if yeah. you look at the the open source initiative whose logo we have here they they define i think it's nine or ten criteria that that an open source license has to fulfill um, but it's basically a stricter way of expressing the four freedoms. Uh, so so from, an, from that perspective, from a very practical perspective, they, they are compatible. Um, but I'd, I'd say that the free software moment thinks more about the ethics uh, rather than the, the technicalities, so to speak. So it's slightly different viewpoints on the same thing. It's about sharing code anyhow. That's the cool thing. We are going to discuss in the next uh, like topic a couple of licenses that uh, we, we, we don't know what a license is, but you probably heard about copyleft licenses, etc. And we are going to mention it, but just not now. Another thing that used to be, or perhaps still is, uh, a thing is that it used to be like, uh, debates on what is best open source or free software and you, you, you are going to see or you, you used to see debates on permissive license we don't know what a permissive license is yet and and also copyleft so and for me I never cared about these kind of fights but they were they were it's, big it's, it's typical for, for our type of uh, people I, I'm speaking of developers isn't it tabs versus spaces different editors Amiga versus Atari <laughs> we, we always we find a little dividing factor and try to divide ourselves into groups but for, yeah. it's all about sharing code as you say yeah that leads to the, the, the question I'm an Emacs user can you guys wow. Me too. No, 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 bim, no. bim, 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 bim. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but the fun thing about the uh, the rivalry here is also nowadays, at least, what I see is that there's very little knowledge about uh, about the differences, but still people seem to find those small details and fight to the death about it. <laughs> I guess it's less now than it was in the 2000s, but, but it's still there. So it's always a heated debate. Yeah. And for me, well, it, I think I mix, mix the words. I don't, I mean, we, because, because my, I'm in the free software <laughs> part and for big, mostly just because for me personally the freedom part is the important part uh, freedom for me as a user and not as a developer because I'm a user mostly and developer just uh, yeah. second <laughs> yeah you don't need to convince me <laughs> <laughs> fight 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 yeah exactly we were almost showcasing exactly this thing <laughs> <laughs> good point good point <laughs> but i think that that leads us to the end um so we'll uh, we'll see you in another week in another episode so thank you <laughs>